Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Green, and today we are going to be playing a premiere draft of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It is out for everybody on Arena now, which is super exciting. It's been a really cool format so far, and I'm very happy to see how it progresses, but without further ado, let's hop into our pick one, pack one here. We have an excellent pack. I don't think you can go that wrong taking any of the rares or uncommons here. Pack is just some sweet stuff. I love the minecart for being colorless and fitting into any deck we draft. That might be the correct pick, but I haven't gotten to play with the Chupacabra Echo yet, and if you can fill your graveyard just a little bit, this is a fantastic two-for-one. Hitting the board while clearing out an opposing creature, so I really want to try out the Chupacabra Echo. I think the card can be super nasty. The other picks in that pack were the two-mana instant removal spell, Obviously, incredibly efficient removal is a super high pick. And then the rare, just a really nice dual land that you can turn into a creature late game when you're out of stuff to do. So, excellent pack one, but we'll go for the Chupacabra Echo, go for a bit of a, a Descent kind of deck that wants to have a full graveyard to get maximum value. And any deck that wants to have a full graveyard could maybe be reanimating some large creatures if we mill them early. So something like Soul Coil Viper could be a very fun inclusion to a Chupacabra Echo style deck. So we'll probably roll with that. But there are other very powerful options here. The Master's Guide Mural is a fantastic build around for the blue-white craft deck. Craft is another somewhat graveyard-oriented mechanic, where if you spend the craft mana cost at sorcery speed, as well as exile a card of whatever type from your board or graveyard. So with this, exile an artifact from the board or the graveyard. You get to transform the spell into the really powerful back half of the card. So that's another way you can utilize any extra cards you've shoved into your graveyard. You can help craft your, uh, your craft spells. But we're going to stick to just black mill stuff with Soul Coil Viper. For pick three, there are some great options here. Again, we have Dead Weight. If I want a cheap removal spell that also puts a permanent in my graveyard, which I think with my first pick, I definitely do the Chupacabra Echo. So I'll probably take that. But Mephitic Draft is another really nice card. This is a card that you can sacrifice to some of these sacrifice effects in the format to just turn it into great card draw, drawing you a card when you play it and when you sacrifice it. So that's pretty spicy. River Herald Scouts and Pathfinding Axtra are both incredible creatures just because of the value of exploring when they enter the battlefield to set up your draws, picking up a land off the top, or letting you surveil, mill your card if you don't want it while getting a plus one plus one counter. I think creatures with explore enter the battlefield effects generally pretty great too, but we're sticking to just black for now with the dead weight. For pick four... We do have a Screaming Phantom, which is a great way to fuel our Soul Coil Viper and our Chupacabra Echo, any of these cards that want a full graveyard. This is going to do that every single turn, so I think Screaming Phantom's a reasonable place to be here. I don't see anything super insanely powerful off-color. I have been very impressed by the Sunshot Militia. This does add a ton of extra damage throughout the game because of the amount of random artifacts and creatures sitting on the board. 1-1 one, one tokens, like 1-1 one, one funguses and 1-1 one, one gnomes. Artifact tokens like the new map tokens could be sitting around, and of course, like treasure tokens as well can be sitting around for the militia, so this card's been a very impressive common. Um, but outside of that, Iceberg's been solid, Pirates has been solid, Ruin Lurker Bat has been solid, but I don't think any of these are huge reasons to jump off of just mono black mill stuff for now. Pick 5 might change that, because we see a braid in red, which is tremendously efficient removal, especially in this format where a lot of the more powerful craft cards are artifacts. They're artifacts on the front, and then they flip into a really big, scary artifact creature on the back high, on the back half for a lot of these. So having the abrade being able to kill small creatures or big craft creatures in late game is really, really nice. The awkward part is I don't think red-black is a particularly synergistic, particularly powerful color pair from what I've seen. The red pairs really well with the white and blue with all the artifact synergies. Um, but a braid might be a strong enough card to take here over the mycoid. But I don't know. I'm actually going to get weird with it. I almost definitely should take a braid, but I'll take the mycoid. It gives me a fungus every single time that I put a permanence into my graveyard with something like Screaming Phantom. Not every time, but every turn in which I do that. 
and that could be a lot of value for a Descend deck, especially if we get some of the cards that tap untapped creatures for value or something. All right, well, we found the black-red signpost uncommon, so maybe a braid into Zoyowo would have been a great spot to be. But the other awkward part is that reanimator spells in this format are going to be pretty great in basically any color except red. Ideally, blue and green is where you'd want to be with the reanimator spells because they actually have some big creatures, but white and red really don't have big creatures to reanimate. Um, here the pick is pretty obvious. We just take the Zoyowa. Um, but we are pretty sad about not taking that abrade here. That is looking awkward. Although this pack doesn't see anything fantastic for red black. Militia's good, but I don't think black is super good at spitting out additional permanents to tap with this. So again, this is like a great red white and red blue card. Weaker in red black and red green. Could take the deep goblin skull taker if we're going full in on mono black descend stuff. That might get a bunch of counters over time. It's still just going to be one big threat, and that's all it does. So if our opponent spends one removal spell, we haven't gotten anything out of the card, but who knows, it could be exciting at the right time. Pick eight, we can take another Brood Rage Mycoid. Great card with our Screaming Phantom. If we play like 100% permanence in our deck, that is going to trigger the Mycoid every single turn we attack with the Phantom. And it's possible, it's not super likely, but at this point we're currently 100% permanence. Pick 9 looks like a bunch of poop, a bunch of doo-doo. Uh, we've got some decent green cards actually here, and they would pair well with the black. Being a slower, grindier deck, using something like the Stone Tree to ramp up, or something like the Mineshaft Spider to mill ourselves some more, fill the graveyard for all of our Descend cards as well as our reanimator spells. I am a little clumped at four mana with the double mycoid already. I think I'll take the stone tree, and then if we mill a cave at any point, then we can craft by exiling that cave from grave to spit this into a 5-5, five five. and it's not hard to find a few caves. Don't love the draft for black-green if we head in that direction. All the sacrifice effects are in black and white. Um... There are enough in black, we could still take the draft, but I think Screaming Phantom is going to hit more synergies for us, so we'll take that. Alright, we'll take the Mephitic draft this time. Over a white spell. Or I think there was a dirty blue spell there as well, and well, there you go, there's an Acolyte of Aquazots for a sack card. I feel like Militia is strong enough to take it here, even if black's a lot worse at using it. Though, I think I still take Militia over the Acolyte. Now an Ancestor's Aid. Family Reunion. And we're not super tied into any secondary color, so if we open a really great rare or mythic in a non-black color, we could head in that direction. We do see a Thousand Moon Smithy, which is a great rare. Four mana for a legendary artifact that comes with a Gnome Soldier with power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts and creatures you control. So by itself, it's already a 2-2, because you have the smithy and the token. And if you have just one more creature on board, it's a 4-mana 3-3. Three, three. You've got a creature and artifact, it's a 4-mana four 4-4, four, four, and that's not that hard to hit. That should be relatively consistent. Then if you have 5 untapped artifacts and creatures in your pre-combat main phase, you can tap them all to flip into the barracks of the 1,000, which is incredibly hard to beat, because then every time you cast an artifact or creature you're spitting out another one of these Gnome Soldiers. So I think Thousand Moon Smithy is an incredible rare. Big reason to hop into another color. Hopefully we can get the Rampaging Spike Tail back, because there hasn't been a lot of black cards being drafted. There are definitely at least one or two other players in black. We didn't get like the, uh, the blue-black rare back. We didn't get the instant speed removal spell back. Nothing like that, but... We have been seeing a lot of black commons late, so if we get that one late, that's a great card to work with our Soul Coil Viper, since we can Swamp Cycle it, and then we've got a big creature in the grave to reanimate. Alright, pack two, pick two. Another Mycoid is just kind of okay. I don't really love any of these white spells. There's an Archaeologist that's a lot of mana, but decent value. Gem Guard's okay with a ton of stuff to tap, and Crack Shot's just a dirtily 2-mana two 2-2. Two -two. 
The only card I really like here is the Pathfinding Axe Draw. Maybe the Hidden Acropolis is fine as a pick. I don't really want a third Mycoid, though. And again, we're just not getting anything great for a black-white deck. Regardless, I'll just take an Acropolis here. Very unexciting pack, unfortunately. All right, pick three. Now we get some gas in the white to go with our Thousand Moon Smithy. We've got a spring-loaded saw blades, which is actually quite nice because while it is situational removal, only shooting tapped creatures, the plus side is that it's a two for one. You get to cast it as a removal spell and then have it sitting on the board as an artifact for a while that you can tap for some stuff potentially. Uh, and then you just get to craft it later and also get a five five vehicle out of it that crews for only one. Sawblades is a great two for one and I'll take it here. Vanguard of the Rose is a great card for the black white archetype you do care about sacking some stuff so it'll work really well with the mephitic drafts if we can pick up a lot of those um or skull cap snail little expendable creatures like that but i think saw blades is a sweet enough two for one to take that here now we have a careening mine cart which is pretty awesome we also have super efficient removal with the bitter triumph we've also got some sack fodder with another mephitic draft I think I just take the bitter triumph here, just take that raw efficiency on that removal spell, but mine card I think is my second favorite card. Just excellent in pretty much any deck in the format, and with our smithy, it's gonna give us a really wide board status stuff to uh tap down early. But bitter triumph, two mana, blow up whatever you need. Just excellent. Pick five, there's a skull cap snail for us. It hits the board immediately one for ones our opponent, so anything it does from that point on is just gravy. And the things that it can do are pretty nice. A 1-1 one -one can crew a crew one card like a blade wheel chariot. A uh, 1-1 one -one can chump block and fill our graveyard for our descend cards. It can do plenty of decent stuff. It can get tapped towards the thousand moon smithy flipping. I like skull cap snail a solid amount here. Pick six. We do have a lot of random self mill nonsense, so Echo of Dust might occasionally become a 3 3 lifelinker later in the game. By the time it becomes a 3 3 lifelinker, it probably doesn't matter that much, but there's not anything else on color here, really, so take the Echo of Dusk. Pick seven. Now we take a Glorifier of Suffering. Excellent way to sacrifice our Mephitic Draught. Sorry, our Mephitic Draft. I always want to call it Drought just because that's how it's spelled, but it is Mephitic Draft. Uh, but yeah, we'll go for Glorifier of Suffering here. Pick eight. Another Echo of Dusk it is, I suppose. Pick nine. We did get the Spike Tail to come back, so we finally have one card that it is great to reanimate to the Soul Coil Viper. So there's at least one in here. I guess every now and then we might use this as just an okay little value play. Flip our three drop into a four drop mycoid or something. Maybe we'll get a chupacabra echo to hit the grave. This does not have the restriction where it says if it was cast, give something minus x minus x. It'll just always do it. So maybe trade off an echo and then soul coil viper it back could be pretty sweet. Take another brood rage mycoid. Well, I mean, taking a look at the mana curve, we do have four... Four drops here, three two drops. Maybe I should take the pretty filler crack shot just because we can't overload on these high mana value plays. We're much more consistently going to be able to play some two drops early and do some stuff with them. Not very excited about the blow gun, so I'll take the Inquisitor, but again, for mana curve reasons, it'll probably get the cut. I will try to get another Mephitic draft in here, find a few more ways to sacrifice them for good value. But we could use some card draw, and the nice thing about these is they're going to give us some card draw spells for our deck while not adding any non-permanence to the deck. I think the less instants and sorceries in here, the better to really try to make the Chupacabra Echo, the Brood Rage Mycoids, as consistent as possible. And currently we only have one non-permanent card, and that's Bitter Triumph. And that card is just so efficient that it's worth it. All right, we have 21 playables. One of them is a land, so to get 23 non-lands and 17 lands, which is the usual number, we're going to need to find four more playables in this last pack. Or no, just three more still. Um, but that should be super, super easy to do. 
Let's see. Well, I say that, and then we open our pack three pick one, and it's not the greatest. I guess we can take a fanatical offering. The big issue with this is it is another non-permanent card, but it is a very solid way to sacrifice one of our Mephitic drafts. It can also sacrifice a fungus token for great value, so this is a pretty good card draw spell. Ray of Ruin is pretty slow removal, but that could be another option. We do have three removal spells. Uh, Deadweight, Sawblades, Bitter Triumph. I think those are all better than Ray of Ruin. And yeah, maybe pick two, pick three. We could hopefully get past some kind of decent removal in black or white. I'm going to take the offering here. I guess Canonized in Blood is an option too, because we are pretty consistent at descending, but I don't love the idea of a two-man enchantment that just puts a plus one plus one counter on the board every turn like we've had that before in like kamigawa neon dynasty with the landfall enchantment and stuff and it's just never been impressive it does have the the cash it out ability once you hit seven mana of turning into a four three flyer but a seven mana four three flyer is also not good for the mana cost so i just don't think the two stack together to making it that great here i should probably take ruin lurker bats um because it's a great little creature to buff up with a glorifier of suffering or something. But I, well, no, somebody will probably take Screaming Phantom over the Spike Tail. Yeah, I'll take the Ruin Lurker Bat here. And we're definitely hoping to get the Rampaging Spike Tail to wheel, because we can really use it with our um, Soul Coil Viper. But the reason that I feel like it's probably okay to pass it there is the fact that we wheeled the last one. And I think it was like the only black card in that pack. And we still got it back. So hopefully we can get it back again. Somebody will just take the uh, the Phantom over it if someone wants a black card from there. We'll see. Pack three, pick three. We've got a Petrify for solid cheap removal or a Stinging Cave Crawler, which is great with consistent descend for card draw. Again, three removal spells, a little low here. I've got a lot of three mana drops competing, but I could definitely fit the Cave Crawler in because it's great, but... I think I take the Petrify here. I want some more interaction. And Petrify is not bad at all. The only big flaw of the Petrify is if you're playing against Bounce spells or Enchantment removal spells, it's going to be bad because they can save their creature from it. But if you're playing against Craft or whatever, then if you just destroyed their creature, they could already exile it from the grave for value, so that doesn't really change anything. So, yeah, it's just if your opponent has Bounce or if they have Enchantment removal... It's going to be a bummer. Don't really want to play a Gnar or an Inquisitor. Maybe we could play a Gnar in here. Inquisitor gives us more ways to use our drafts. So I guess there's that. I could play Bristleback, Bristleback just for reanimation, but I don't think so. I'll just take the Gnar just because 5 drop on the mana curve. Ooh, pick 5. Ah, I'd love to take the Join the Den, but I think thanks to taking that Petrify here and having four removal spells now, I can actually afford to pass it up to take Bartolome del Presidio, which is an excellent, excellent sacrifice engine. The best one by far, because it does it at instant speed, and it does it for free. So this is just such a great way to use our Mephitic Drafts, to use our Fungus Tokens, Anything like that. I really like the Bartolome here. Sorry, join the dead. Okay, pick six. Even if I get the other Spike Tail to come back, I don't think I want to play Defossilize just for two Spike Tails. Because this one is pretty expensive. So I think I would rather just take Plane Cycler or a Sacrifice Outlet like the Acolyte here the mephitic drafts i'll take the acolyte don't think anything i take here is super likely to make the cut maybe the acrobatic leap actually just for a combat trick in the deck could be fine Ooh, pick seven we find a deep cavern mat great enter the battlefield effect on this lock out your opponent's best card in hand until they kill your bat so make them spend removal spell on this thing it's pretty solid like the deep cavern bat here Another Mephitic Draft, now that we've got Bartolome in the deck as well. Sure. Don't know if we'll play all three, but it's more likely than anything else in the pack. Now I'll throw a Ray of Ruin into the sideboard. I don't think that'll make it, and I will definitely take the Spike Tail. It came all the way back. And now I'm feeling much happier about my Soul Coil Viper. It's got two friends, 
And when we don't have one of those two friends, it might still hit decent value off a of mic weight or something. All right, well, plenty of Inquisitors. I guess I'll take the Bristleback here. I don't think I'm splashing a Bristleback. Whoa! Most open black draft pod. We get to join the dead anyway. All right, so we're going to have two non-permanent cards in the deck. We're going to run Join the Dead, and we're going to run Bitter Triumph. But I think that is it for non-permanence. I guess there's a fanatical offering in here. That's three non-permanent spells in the entire deck. So that's going to be really consistent descending when we're milling off Screaming Phantoms and the like. This looks pretty solid. I mean, it's all the bread and butter stuff. The synergies in this color pair definitely look a bit weaker than a lot of the others. I feel like red-blue and white-blue, some of these artifact deck synergies could just pop off and do insane things. Or like red-green dinos can just curve out so well. Like, I feel like we have the black-white sack and descend synergy stuff going for us it's just not as powerful as some potential other synergies maybe the best way to build the color pair is to just slam a bunch of one drops and two drops and just try to put counters on them with glorifiers rather than going for full later game synergies like we have here because yeah i feel like we were in a pretty open draft pod we got about anything we wanted but the deck still doesn't look incredible it just looks solid and it feels like when you are in a position where your color is this open, it should feel pretty spectacular. Uh, and it just doesn't quite feel that way. It looks pretty solid, pretty okay. Alright, so how are we building this thing? I think I'm cutting the offering and just relying on the drafts for card draw. And that puts us to just two non-permanent cards in the deck. Which really gets the descent stuff going. Um, so yeah, we'll cut the offering for sure. Nar is one of our more dirtily creatures with two spike tails we can use as by turning them into lands. We can probably cut a swamp as well. That's two more swamps. Uh, we have to spend mana on those though, so ideally we still just draw the lands naturally, but our curve stops at four if we treat these as always getting cycled as well, which also helps to cut a land. Um, yeah, let's cut the Gnar, and then we only need to cut four more cards from there. Inquisitor's another way to sacrifice the Mephitic Drafts. How many ways do we have without the Inquisitor is the question. We have three. We have Bartolome, Glorifier, and Acolyte, which feels a bit low. So I probably should still play the Inquisitor, which is kind of a lot of four drops. Two Mycoid, an Inquisitor, an Echo, and a Smithy. That is kind of a lot, but do you really want to sack these things? Four cuts to go. Thousand Moons Crack Shot is just a two mana two two, really. Yeah, it can tap something for three mana when it attacks, but that is insanely expensive. You're only going to do that like once per game maximum in the majority of games. And it'd be a really specific scenario where you'd want to do that. I feel like even with double phantom, Skull Taker just feels a little slow. Maybe we should only play two of the drafts as well. Go more for Mycoid as the descend card with the phantoms than the Skull Taker. And then the phantoms, of course, just fill the grave for the Echo too. I suppose if we cut a Mephitic draft... Then having three ways to sacrifice something for two copies of draft is not that bad. Because again, like these cycle when you play them, two mana just draw a card isn't good, but it's not the end of the world if we don't get to sacrifice them during that game. Probably not horrific to just have two copies of this and not run the Inquisitor. I kind of like that a little better. And then I only need to cut two more cards, which could just be these two. The Soul Coil Viper Spike Tail thing is probably more cute than anything, but I still want to do it. It's fun. Might be the best build is throwing these cheap cards back in and cutting a Spike Tail and a Viper. But I'm not going to do that. I'm keeping Spike Tail Viper combo. 
seeing if we can get it to pop off because it's fun. I suppose since we did find a join the dead, we have five removal spells here. We could cut one of them. Cut the bitter triumph for the join the dead just so that we have literally only one non-permanent in the deck. Does not feel correct though. Let's cut the Thousand Moons crack shot for sure. And I think I will cut the Skull Taker. We'll just have the Screaming Phantoms fill Descend to turn these into 3 threes, To spit out 1-1s one with this. To up the power of Chupacabra Echo and join the dead. We don't need to get plus one plus one counters on our dirtly menace dork here. I think we will call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today, and we are on a black-white descend deck. We want to fill our graveyard consistently for cards like Brood Rage Mycoid to keep spitting out 1-1s one every turn, and to make our descend cards better like Chupacabra Echo, giving a huge minus X minus X, where X is number of cards in our graveyard, and Echo of Dusk becoming these 2-mana 3-3 three, three lifelinkers. When we've got a full grave, we can also buff our Join the Dead to be a minus 10, minus 10 removal spell, but this is honestly already going to kill almost anything. So that's the main stuff going on with our Screaming Phantoms and mostly permanents in the deck to fill that out. But we also have a solid aggressive curve of creatures with some other synergies. We have Sacrifice synergies off cards like Bartolome del Presidio, Acolyte of Aklazots, and Glorifier of Suffering. With these, we can be sacrificing some 1 1 fungus tokens from Brood Rage Mycoid for value, some 1 1s like a Skullcap Snail for value, or something like the Mephitic Draft to draw some additional cards, which should be pretty sweet. So we've got those sacrifice synergies going as well, and a little Reanimator sub theme with two Spike Tails that we can turn into an extra swamp to up our land count a little bit with two more potential black sources. And by putting them in the grave, we can reanimate one to a Soul Coil Viper. So those are the really cool things going on in the deck, the kind of unique things going on in the deck. Other than that, the Bomb Rare Thousand Moon Smithy and some solid removal in our non-creature slot to, uh, to keep the deck together, to keep everything cohesive and flowing. And yeah, that is the deck we're going to be playing today. Without further ado, let's head into the gameplay and see how it does. Here we are now for game one with curve i wouldn't say a great curve because we have nothing to sacrifice for these dorks but we're spitting them out on curve which is pretty good our opponent starts with thousand moons crack shot a 2-2 that they can spend three mana when they attack with to tap something down we have drawn two four mana spells in a row so we would really like to hit a fourth land in the next two draw steps ideally a swamp for our join the dead or a swamp cycler Swamp Cycler would also be a great draw here because we have the Soul Coil Viper. I think I'm going to jam out the Soul Coil Viper. Like, unless they spend some mana to tap with the Crack Shot, it holds them off of attacking. And if we top deck a Swamp Cycler, we can reanimate it immediately. Our opponent is on white, blue, and black. They have a Restless Reef on the board for some mana fixing. get a blue mana out of that and cast a Tinker's Tote to get two 1-1 one, one gnomes. Great card, that would be sweet with our Bartolome, but white was relatively heavily drafted in our pod. It was black that was the really open color, so we did not manage to get any Tinker's Totes to go with Bartolome. Okay, let's just get the Mycoid on the board so we can start trying to get some Funguses out. The way that Descended works is we've Descended if a non-token was put into our graveyard. If a permanent card is put into our graveyard from anywhere, and tokens are permanents, but they aren't cards, they're tokens, so they will not uh, keep going. Like, if I sacrifice a token to buff Bartolome, I won't get a replacement in the end step unless I also sacrificed something else or discarded a card or milled a card, something like that. So that's a little sad. We don't get to go like crazy with that. But it'll still be pretty nice, I think. 
All right, our opponent's just going to pass the turn. Find a sixth land here, so we are not doing a whole lot. Just chilling. Against a bunch of open mana, I don't love the attack with Mycoid, but the plus side is that we have a second copy, and if it does trade off into some stuff, we can play the second copy and get a Fungus here. And we can also, like, Soul Coil Viper it back. What I don't love about this attack is I don't really want to cast a Join the Dead and try to, like, kill both their blockers because they left all this mana open. So let's go for the Mycoid. See if it resolves. It does resolve, and I could reanimate the other one and get two Fungus here. Two Fungi. This turn. Sure. Let's see what they have up for this four mana. What instant they're planning on. It's looking like nothing. Alright, might have just been like a combat trick or something that since we didn't prompt them to use anything, they were like, all right, this trade is fine with me. Well, the double mycoid is gonna do things potentially here. Ooh, a spring-loaded saw blades if they manage to get aggressive at any point. So we send in the whole team holding up Join the Dead now. And Bartolome's ability is instant speed as well. So if they block Bartolome, I respond by sacking a 1-1. And they have to spend a trick to kill Bartolome as well. If they do manage to kill one Mycoid, at least that triggers the Descended for the other one. And they're just going to sack their 1-1 one -one to draw some cards. That's fair. And that is fine. They are going to cause me and blast this Mycoid. Okay, so I can't save it. And I guess when it dies, it gets exiled instead because they're choosing the one with the finality counter on it, which means that this won't trigger Descended because it gets exiled. But I can still get a plus one, plus one counter out of it at least. But yeah, not triggering Descended is actually one of these sad nombos with, um, with finality counters here. Yeah, sad day. Let's hold up the double black for the Join the Dead. Since the saw blades is not going to be shooting anything, they're not going to play a creature tapped. And things are looking okay here. It's just an empty board to beat down in, unless they have a board wipe of some kind. Then we could just win this game the pretty traditional route. Kill whatever blocker they cast and attack with everybody. It's 10 damage, puts them down to 5. Stalactite Stalker. At the beginning of your end step, you descended this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and for three mana, they can sack it, give a creature minus X, minus X till end of turn, where X is its power. So if I try to removal spell it, they respond by sacking it and killing something anyway. They hit a land off of their explore from the map token, so they didn't descend this turn, so it's just a 1-1. One, one. So I don't think we even try to kill it. We just attack with everybody. Resplendent Angel. Okay, we try to kill that. And they're tapped out, so we just do. Goodbye, Resplendent Angel. Big Mythic Rare. Gets like plus two, plus two lifelink, and if they gain a bunch of life in one turn, then they also... Um, they also spit out a 4-4 Flying Angel. Just go nuts. Just send in the team here. Cool, chump block the Mycoid. And now the only out is a board wipe. Which I don't think they would have cast their Resplendent Angel if they also had a board wipe in hand, but... Actually, at this point, they have enough more cards in hand than us than they probably would. They probably would, just to really make sure they live another turn. So they could still have a board wipe to win the game here. But again, if they don't, it's getting harder and harder for them to survive another turn. Still not impossible. I'm sure there's a combination of cards that can do it. Another Tinker's Tote would go a long way. 
two more one ones to chump block with and another three life if they sacrifice it they do already have three points of life gain on board off of this one so they're essentially at 10 if they can hold an extra mana up We do have the Petrify for the Spike Tail. Our deck is pretty solid against Petrify style removal, where we can still get value off that card later. Send in the team, because if they don't have any interaction, this is going to hit for more than if I hold the Acolyte back, because then I just sack the Spike Tail to the Bartolome here. If they don't kill Bartolome. That way, Acolyte hits for one, Spike Tail hits for one, and we hit for three, for six, seven. If I tap and sack the Spike Tail to the Acolyte, this will hit for one total, uh, which is one less damage than a four power Baltolome and a one power Acolyte. So join the dead, minus ten, minus ten. So we cannot stop them from killing Bartolome here, even if I sack my whole board. Okay. So that resolves. We've descended this turn, so we'll get a fungus. And we get to scry one. So still looking pretty here. Scry that swamp to the bottom. Malicious Eclipse. There's the board wipe, but it doesn't kill the Mycoid or the Acolyte. They need another spell. There's a Thousand Moons Infantry. It's just a blocker. And a Swashbuckler's Whip. Okay, Mycoid forces the chump block here. My apologies about the phone. They have to chump block the Mycoid and take one from the Acolyte here. And I get to save the Spike Tail to sack to Acolyte later for damage. And here's a Screaming Phantom, and they basically need another board wipe. We are looking excellent. And there we go. We're going to start things off 1 0 as a mute my phone. All right, here we are for game number two. Now we've got some great cards to go with Bartolome. These are just going to be immediate draw twos. And put a plus one plus one counter on Bartolome. Unless our opponent kills them instantaneously. That would be sad. We'll also trigger Descended any turn that we do that. Which could be spicy. Alright, well they don't really have any good options here. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, just get rid of one of them. We hit a Skullcap Snail. I'd rather just start drawing some cards. Finding something else here. Another land. It's not ideal. What about the next card? Glorifier of Suffering. So, I guess next turn... Hmm. Now it is awkward that we lost a draft here. So if we had one, we'd go Snail Draft now, and then we'd Glorify the Draft away the turn after. Ew. It's just all discard the deck. The Visage of Dread here now. Make us discard an artifact or creature. Choose the Snail. Oh, for one. And we just find the land here. Well, discards have gone pretty well for our opponent. Now I just have to curve out with a 3-2 to beat down. There's an Akawali for a 3-3. Three, three. Gets bigger when they have four or more permanents in their grave. Then it'll be a 5-5. Five, five. Once they have eight or more, it's going to be insanely large. And we are just flooding over here. 
set in the glorifier. I don't love the Bartolome for Aquali trade, but it's not horrible still. Okay, we are going to get the glorifier trade. Drop the swamp past the turn. We do get to play a spike tail next turn, if nothing else. Haslam Stone Tree for some mana ramp. That puts a land from the top six cards of their library into play. And then they can craft it later for six mana. Exile this promising vein from their grave to get a 5-5. Five, five. But a 5-5 five, five is not big enough to block a spike tail, so just a 5-6 is going to be big on this board. It gets past a 5-4 menace or a 5-5, five, five, whichever they want to flip in the future. Brood Rage Mycoid, which is pretty cool, but not as good as slamming down the Spike Tail this turn. I am at least very happy that this time it is not another land. They are going to go for the Chump Block. We're going to get our card draw back. I'm pretty happy to see that. Because it's kind of perfectly timed here as well. Because now we get to play it alongside the Mycoid to also have Descended next turn. Ooh, there's a Gore Stalker. The two for one, but they do have to sack their 6-6 six, six Gore Stalker, so it is not the worst trade in the world. Not as bad as it could be. If they had like two 1-1 one, one Funguses, that's where we would be quite concerned. Oh, what a draw. Alright. Just gonna keep drawing the sweetness now. Two mana, 3-3 three, three Lifelinker, and here's a Brood Rage Mycoid. Show me the Reanimator spell, basically. If they can reanimate that thing that makes us sack two creatures, that'll probably win them the game. But there's only one reanimation spell in the format that would do it immediately. We have the Soul Coil Viper, they'd play that this turn and then reanimate it next turn. Uh, but there's also the Defossilize, that would do it. That's a five mana sorcery that immediately reanimates something from Grave. Alright, awesome, they don't have that, so let's draw a card off the draft now. Ooh, it's a spike tail of our own. That is going to get us an attack in with the Mycoid. Not going to do anything yet. We can't afford it alongside the draft. Punished for not playing a land last turn, by the way, but I think it was still correct, too, against a black deck in the format that started the game by making us discard two cards. They definitely seem like the kind of deck that is going to have drafted all the Skullcap Snails they can find. So, holding the land so that if we draw a removal spell while they have an empty board, we can keep the removal spell in hand with a land with it so that I can exile the land if they make me discard a card and keep the removal spell. I think there is value to that. But obviously it played out poorly. Now that they have a 5-5 five, five Akwali on the board, Spike Tail's looking weaker. Still does get an attack in here. But dropping Phantom when they have no reach creatures is also kind of exciting, because we've got Phantom plus Mycoid, so we'll get a bunch of funguses. Get a bunch of fungi. Probably still just better to be mana efficient. And hold up on the screaming Phantom shenanigans. Get our Mycoid attack in for six. Or for a chump. Alright, they are down to 10. Now they're going to mill two, and then they can put two creatures from their grave back into their hand. They pick up a deep cavern bat, exile my phantom, and an abyssal thingamabob. So they can make a sack two creatures again, but that's not very good on their current board. So there's the bat, which is super annoying. Would have been really annoying either way. Losing the spike tail or the phantom here. There's the soul coil viper, but they don't have the sack two creatures thing in the grave anymore. It's in their hand now. They have nothing they can reanimate in grave right now, because they just have a legendary... A duplicate, so obviously they can't use that. Looks like we are just slowly losing the game here. We're flooding out a little bit, and our opponent does have a lot of two-for-ones just waiting to get flipped, like the Stone Tree and the Osseosaur, so 
I had to bet, I would bet this game is a loss, but it is going to take some time before we actually lose here. We're in a bit of a board stall. It's a losing battle in the long run, though. Which is unfortunate. These are some of the most, like, biggest bummer games where we're going to sit here for 10 minutes while losing the entire time. Just in case we draw exceptionally better than our opponent. But it does not seem likely. Death Touch means we'd be forced to double block and lose two creatures here, which would be pretty terrible. So Blowgun does kind of speed up their clock quite a bit. And making their attacks much better, where I really can't afford to double block and start clearing their board. Which means we go down really fast. Uh, in terms of life total here. Now I can sack the draft draw card, get a fungus, but the fungus can't block anyway. It depends on what we draw off of it, I suppose. If I don't block here, I can't even do that, actually, because this the draft's ability would resolve first. We lose the life before we gain the life. So if I go to 1, I can't use the draft off the Acolyte, I'm pretty sure. So now we have to 2 for 1 ourselves into the Strider. Or Trump with a Life Linker, that's another thing we can do. It really doesn't matter, they've just drawn all non-land still. They have a Visage they can already flip. Well, no, they need one more creature. But as soon as I kill the Strider, they just flip that. Well, no, that's not a creature in Grave. Okay, so they don't have a Visage to flip, but they still have five extra cards to our zero. Oh, and if I do this, then their board state's also much bigger than ours. They could even just play this thing and wipe our board if they want. Yeah, this is rough. Okay, they do have a land at least, so four more spells. That is a great draw. I have to do this during my turn to get the fungus, but the fungus doesn't help block anyway, but then I can play any sorcery speed cards I draw off of the draft. I'm going to do this during my turn. Petrify. Could Sawblades the bat? Then they can reanimate the bat with the viper, I guess? Could Petrify the viper. Could Petrify their equipment also, but then it would still give the Aquawali the extra stats. They just couldn't move it for the rest of the game. So that is kind of interesting, too. I feel like Sawblade's the bat here. It's fine, even with the Viper. Could petrify their spike tail and attack with a 5 6 right now? I 
Find something here. And then the spike tail trades into Aquali, which is fine because that Aquali is about to be a 6 6 next turn. Yeah, no, this is a solid trade to me. Trade into a 6 6 there. Are they going to flip the Visage? Are they going to reanimate Aquali? A lot of options. With the Blowgun around, Phantom is not going to be able to break through anything. We will have another 5-5 five, five blocker up next turn, because I can flip the saw blades and crew it with a fungus. For the worst case scenario. Alright, equipment on the soul coil viper. Sending the team. Very interesting. I guess I just trade the mic weight off, right? Because I'm essentially just trading into as big a creature as possible, regardless. Because they can reanimate their biggest creature in Grave with the Viper. I don't get funguses anymore, but that's fine. Malicious Eclipse. And equip the Strider. Five five blocker is not big enough to stop the strider. And we are in chump mode. There goes my planes from the skull cap snail. I actually missed lethal here. No, they didn't, because wait, yeah, they did. Because they could have played the thing that makes me sack two creatures, and even if I respond by crewing, I sack the Acolyte and the Chariot. But I had a card in hand, so I could have had an instant that would stop them from lethaling me. What can I even draw into at this point? Nothing, really. I can kill one of their creatures, but they've got plenty more to play. Yeah, let's just crew the vehicle, because then even if I don't top deck a creature, I've got a blocker next turn, theoretically, if they don't play the thing that makes each player sack two creatures. Scavenger to pick something up from the grave. Drop the bat. All they gotta do is slam down the thing that makes us both sack two creatures and the game is over. We'll see if they do. And they certainly do, so that is gonna be game. Rough match there. Definitely a little grindy, a little frustrating there. They have to play out a losing game that long, but that is how the green-black decks in the format are really going to play. I think the game against green-black grindy decks like this is really decided in the first, like, 10 turns, but then the game keeps going for another 5-10 after that, to where it's really they need to have enough early defenses, early discard to slow you down to stick around into the long game, but if they can get there, there's enough recursion, two-for-one value and stuff to overwhelm most decks, and that's definitely what happened to us. If they just had a little bit less early discard, um, maybe we had a little bit less early lands, we could have tried to uh, get an aggro defeat before they take over the long game. But once they get to the long game, the advantage does become kind of insurmountable. So one and one heading into game three.
All right, here we are on the play for game number three. A little bit of a slower hand, nothing that's going to be attacking or blocking starting turn two, but we've got a card draw spell or a swamp cycler, and now I have drawn into something that affects the board, so I'll slam that down instead. Next turn, we'll either Swamp Cycle to guarantee the third land, or we'll have Topped Deck it, then we can play the Acolyte. Okay, we have not Top Decked the land, so let's get land for turn off the Swamp Cycler. Okay. Can Swamp Cycle and play a draft here so let's do that a little sad to use all the swamp cyclers before i have any of my descend cards on board but we need to hit all of our lands on curve here and now we have there's their own brood rage mycoid Ooh, thousand moon smithy but i don't have plane cyclers in here so we are not at double white yet let's probably set up for the smithy pretty well here let's draw some cards and look for the next white source and just try to get a bunch of random artifacts to sit on the board to tap towards it so i'll probably just saw blades the mycoid We'll see if they have a way to give it three extra toughness. They do not. Mycoid is dead. They're going to play an Enterprising Scallywag, so they get a treasure token since they descended. And that's all. Another swamp for us. We are on a 50-50 split. We just have the two Swamp Cyclers to help get more black sources, because we have a lot more black spells than white spells, but we're still on the 50-50 because, specifically, we have Thousand Moon Smithy in this deck. So, a little unfortunate here. Guess we'll get some Flyers on the board. Let's see what's in their hand. Off the Deep Cavern Bat first. But then we're probably playing Screaming Phantom. If I play Acolyte, I can dig towards the next source, sacking some drafts here. But then I have less stuff on board to tap towards the smithy. So there's that. They can abrade the bat, but then I still get to see the rest of the hand at least. So they have a Tithing Blade. I'm very surprised they went for a braid instead of Tithing Blade there. So they've got a Ray of Ruin and a Tithing Blade coming up. Okay. Against Tithing Blade, I don't think I play anything. I mean, playing the Phantom's not horrible. We get the Blade out of the way, and then they're down to just a Ray of Ruin. Yeah, I don't hate it. I think playing the Acolyte would be kind of bad here, though. Because then we have nothing to sack the drafts with if they Tithing Blade us. Well, let's fight one for one through these. Removal spells, because they're both one-for-one one removal spells. This is kind of a two-for-one, because it turns into Sepulcher later, but that's going to be a little while. Pluttering Pirate is the draw off the top, and it's pretty great here. It's definitely what they're looking for, a few more threats. Swamp is our draw off the top, and it's pretty terrible here. Six mana. Yeah, that's kind of egregious. Now we just play a Mycoid and they exile it. Yep. They get their scry one. Down to 11. Do we get to cast two cards here, which is a start, and then we start using the Acolyte on the drafts. Didn't play the Acolyte last turn or the turn before because we need it to be around to get to the second white off of drawing some extra cards, ideally. Ooh, 
We got an artifact engrave. We do not. So I can't craft the saw blades and crew it off of two drafts. I'd have to craft with a draft if they kill my acolyte. All right, and they're just going to kill the Screaming Phantom, but the Sunshot Militia on board is going to get me killed, even if they can't get a bunch of damage in here, and they still can get into a turn. And then the Tithing Blade starts draining me. I feel like we've just missed too long here, unfortunately. Now that the Militia's here, yeah, I mean, there it is, but... Really feeling too little too late. It's going to be a big blocker. I think I have to hold up the Acolyte on blocks as well and then sack a draft. After I declare a block. Opponent's top deck when empty handed is a mountain. I believe they can flip the blade. Yeah, I mean, they can craft with the idol here at, at worst. But they're going to use their Necropolis to discover, and their random spell is a braid, which kills my 6-6. Six, six. So that's just wonderful. <laughs> it wasn't their top deck, but it was their second top deck. I guess they can kill the factory itself, but they have so much aggro on the board, I cannot afford to flip it, because I have to tap five things to it. So they definitely need to just destroy the 6-6. Six, six. And they find the line. Now I take three damage from the attackers and one from them tapping the blade and the idol. So I take four here. And I go to four, because sure, I gain one from the draft, but I lose one as well. So four life it is, four life and a dream. There's a bitter triumph. Hold on a second. I have to pay three life for that right now. Three life to stop. Two damage. I take one more point of damage, but then Militia's permanently gone immediately, and I have all my mana to do whatever with next turn. Let's take one more point of damage here. Now they need to kill me with the Tithing Blade thing. Ooh, Ruin Lurker Bat is a draw. Ruin Lurker Bat is really a draw. A Life Linker is an incredibly big deal here. And thanks to having two artifacts on the board, I get to crew a 5-5 to block. Okay, so I get to block with a 5-5 and a 1-4 this turn and start hitting them for one turn with lifelink every turn. If they miss on their draw. If they don't have interaction, if they play like a creature here or whatever, it's fine. Or if they flip the blade, it's also fine. Alright, they missed. It's another land. It's their 7th mana, so now we both have 7 lands on board. Flip the blade it is. So, depending on their upkeep, we lose 1 and they gain 1, but Bat can counteract that to keep us alive. And they can't get any attacks in now. Yep. If I sack the draft, I have to actually crew chariot with a creature here. Instead of tapping both of these to crew the chariot. So I guess I wait to sack the draft till I know I have another creature. So if I just hit like land land, that's horrific. And we just lose. We've hit seven black sources. 
and two white sources this game, which is crazy on a 50-50, but two of these black sources came from both of our swamp cyclers. It's more like we hit... What? Four black sources and two white sources? Did I say seven black? I'm at six black. I miscounted. Alright. Craft this equipment, and that actually is a huge deal. Because that's big enough now to trade into my 5-5. Five five. And I can't just block it for free with the Acolyte. Oh wow, and another equipment. Plus two, plus one now as well. Throw it on the other creature, and then I only have one good block and the other's a chump. That's, yeah, huge draw here, the Bloodthorn Flail. That is a weird... Equip. I guess if they put the plus two plus one there, then I could put the five five there and then chump there. But this way I have to lose the five five. That explains it for sure. Problem is every creature they have is now going to become mega massive. Bended a bunch of mana into the double equip every turn. So we are now in the position where we really need to draw into something, and the artifact sitting on board doesn't help crew anything anymore. I've got nothing else to crew. And that's three for three on our last three draws, unfortunately. Now... Because of this sepulcher here, I think I have to keep the bat around now we chump with the acolyte and sack the smithy obviously if they top deck removal we're dead but we are not winning this game without counteracting the sepulcher life loss regardless and they top decked removal ah is what it is. We can go to four life there, and then they equip the Scallywag to make it four power and kill us. Rough, rough luck in the end there. I thought for sure we lost from the beginning because of the uh, lack of white sources we were drawing for a thousand moon smithy, and that was pretty rough. We took a lot of extra early damage to that, uh, but we managed to get pretty close to stabilizing in the end, and then just hard at hitting a land clump again, and that's all it takes to tip the scales here in the end, we are 1 and 2, heading into round 4. Here we are now for game 4 with a hand that can definitely cast the smithy on turn 4. Not going to have enough permanence to flip the smithy, but it's still solid on just the front half. So a definite keep. As we saw last game, it was just straight up a 6-6 six, six for 4 mana. Miner's Guidewing, turn one, so some real aggro stuff. There's the Mephitic Draft to go with our Glorifier, which is pretty spicy. The one issue with that is now I have to curve awkwardly if I want to get both plus one plus one counters where I'm not playing my three drop turn three, but I think that'll be fine. There's the Healy's Lattice, just discard a card, draw two. If they have a Dinosaur Engrave, it's really good because then they just flip it into a Dinosaur later, but they do not. They're just playing it as a draw spell for now. Um, I would be quite a large fan of putting a plus one plus one counter onto a deep cavern bat. So, I think I'm going to play the bat this turn. We'll see what they have. They've got a torch for removal, and then some dorks. So, we'll get rid of the torch, and let them keep the dorks. Bunch of lands for a red-white deck. So, we're happy to see that. Oh my lord, they have top decked quite a bomb rare here. Inti is a fantastic card draw engine. And they buff the board every time? Yeah, this card a card put a plus one plus one counter on the guide wing. They just immediately have a 2 2 flyer. And they draw an extra card this turn. And every turn they do that. They discard a card, draw a card. Luckily, they hit a card that was too expensive to cast this turn, so we'll just. I can't even petrify this thing because it's a triggered ability. Shoot, I was going to say I'll petrify it next turn, but that's not going to stop anything. That is horrific. 
And now even if I glorify our suffering the bad up to 2-2 two, two stats, this Guidewing attacks at a 3-3 three, three next turn off of this rare. I can't do anything about that with this hand. We need to draw into our other removal spells. All three of our other removal spells work. Deadweight, our discard spell, our bitter triumph or whatever it is, and then the Chupacabra. Those would all be outs. Chupacabra would take some time. We'd have to fill our grave here, but we can do it. We've got a sack out. We can chump block this stuff. All right. Might be the insta scoop to inti. I guess I can at least play the smithy so they just keep hitting us with the guide wing. Don't get anywhere with inti. So that we keep that at 2-2 two, two power and toughness so we can still dead weight it later if we draw into it. And that should be helpful. Oh, Lord. All right, they hit a Tinker's Tote off of the draw this time, so they definitely cast that. It's a great card. Perfect craft fodder for the landmark. We find a land. Now we glorify our suffering the draft away. Digging for the dead weight. I think I do it before I play the Echo of Dusk, even though I'd kind of like to put a counter on the Echo. Just so if I top deck a dead weight or a bitter triumph, I have the mana up for it. Find a spike tail. Okay, Echo of Dusk it is. I guess I could just petrify the guide wing now. And they have to chump attack at this point. Yeah, probably worth it at this point. Really didn't want to have to end up doing that. Over petrifying something much better. But that is the position we're in. If we can't find a way to deal with Inti, just try to lock down the ground and stop them from declaring attacks that way. But Tinker's Tote gets around that, giving them an expendable chump attacker for two turns. And then the landmark is going to get around... And get them attacking next turn but there's the dead weight and now it doesn't matter that they hit us in the sky okay that's pretty big now i send in the ground troops i guess i could triple block the glorifier do i hate that Not really. Alright, they're just going to take it. Uh-oh. Wonder what the non-revealed card is in their hand. Wonder what is coming up. Next turn, I think we're going to spike tail to buff the bat to gain four. If nothing crazy happens. Alright, plundering pirate is not crazy. And they can see the dead weight... Finds us the victory there, and we are 2-2. Two and two. Was really scared of getting hit by the 1-3 nice and quick to start off the draft season, but very lucky to find the dead weight there. And uh, yeah, just cashing in the Petrify early on the Guide Wing, I think also is something we kind of needed to do there. Probably would have been fine to use it a turn tuner, a turn tuner, <laughs> a turn sooner as well. Um, but... Yeah, cash it in at some point there for sure. Here we are now for game number five. We're two and two right now. This would be a deciding game in terms of the prizes we get. If we get at least three wins, we get a thousand gems or more. If we only get two wins, we get like 250 gems. So this is a very important game here. And I don't know if I want to gamble on this hand. Now, we have both of our colors, which is great. We know we're going to hit all the lands we need because we have the double Swamp Cycler. And we have a Petrify for an early threat. But with no creatures of our own till turn four, we can easily fall behind against an aggro deck. Now, we did get to see that they've mulliganed at least once. I think we can do the friendly mulligan here. 
we take a mulligan as well, and we shouldn't fall behind card advantage-wise from taking a mulligan. And this way we won't fall behind on board, hopefully, by having some more early creatures in our other hand. All right, and there you go. Dead weight. Then an early deep cavern bat for an early creature. Soul Coil Viper if we draw any of the land cyclers. We've got the draft for card draw, so I even think we can ditch a land here. Because I can still cast three of the four spells. Yeah, this does look like a better hand. It has the same early game removal our other hand had, with just one early game removal spell. Uh, but this actually has a much lower mana curve. And I'm not going to spend a dead weight on a 1-1 one, one freebooter. I'll just race that with a deep cavern bat for lifelink. There's a skullcap snail, which is gross. We probably just get rid of the viper without land cyclers in hand. Although dead weight is not looking that good in this hand, honestly. Well, against their deck right now, just some 1-1s. One I think I'll still keep hold of that over the viper find to join the dead wish we were on the play so we could have deep cavern batted and seen exactly what we were dealing with to know how much removal we'd need but oh a preacher of the schism an old tech cloud guard for a four drop and a guide wing so if they resolve this thing it's gonna get an attack off before i can kill it with saw blades they're gonna get incredible value so i'm gonna exile the preacher even though they can't technically cast it with their current hand. I think our removal spells are just much better against the Guide Wing and the Cloud Guard. Alright, there's land three. So they could have played the pre Yeah, could have played the Preacher this turn if I didn't do that. Well, we found the second Black Source for Join the Dead, so if they play the Preacher, we can kill it before it gets an attack at least, which is good. Um... But now we're on draft plus dead weight the guide wing, I think. Yeah. Then Cloud Guard holds off the cavern bat, but if they attack with it, we can saw blades it. They do find land four. So they are gonna get the cloud guard down. Take my two damage. They drop the old tech cloud guard. I could join the dead on it. But then when they top deck removal to save their preacher, it's going to get an attack off and get a trigger. I guess they'll they're going to have the most life, most likely. So they're going to draw a card off one attack, but then I kill it with saw blades after the trigger. It is probably best to immediately impact the board, but I guess this turn I can do that with Screaming Phantom. And then we start attacking with that into the Cloud Guard, and this also holds off the 1-1s, one -one, so... Yeah, Fran Phantom. Phantom's a, a perfectly reasonable play here to keep our Join the Dead for at least one more turn, but if I just hit a land, then I think we'll be at the point where we probably Join the Dead the Cloud Guard if they don't take the trade with the Phantom. There's a promising vein from our opponent that you can sacrifice for a basic land or or a cave, right? Nope, just a basic land. Cool. So just a bunch of mana over there, one card in hand. Sending the team. All right, show me the combat trick. Is combat trick the last card in your hand? It is not. We clear out the flyer without having to use a removal spell. And then I draw another phantom. So we're fine. This looks cool to me. Now we drop another phantom. Another land for our opponent. They're at six mana now. They do have a buried treasure that they can 
discover with discover random spell with mana value five or less when they exile that from grave so that could be big later drawn to a spike tail which i can't cast yet gain one hit them for three and then take three i guess that technically loses the race but i think i still do it here oh my chupacabra echo <laughs> no and my one reanimator spell is exiled that is the saddest the saddest mill from the Screaming Phantom. Let's see what they're going to get off of the Buried Treasure. Probably literally any spell in their deck, but it's going to be at random off the top. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, that's the small one. I thought that was the big one, the 4-3 that buffs the whole board. I was going to be like, oh, that's really good. But it's just the one two that puts a plus one plus one counter out, which is fine. Now we can just saw blades, whatever they make a two two. Just take two damage this turn, and then we're back to winning the race. And I can even flip a saw blades next turn, which will be cute. Wouldn't be doing this if I didn't also have joined the dead in hand, but since I have both, this looks pretty good. Ooh, Bartolome to go with our draft. I am an enjoyer of that. Join the Dead is now minus 10, minus 10, which is wild. Let's see what we got coming. Another land, beautiful. One mana away from the Spike Tail. There's another land for our opponent, which is not beautiful for them. And we hit land six. Lifelink attack in the sky. Clear their whole board with Bartolome if they block, so we'll send in everybody. Okay, well, show me the trick here. No trick, we just kill both the blockers. They do kill our potential vehicle, but we'd have to dump a bunch of mana into that as well as crew it. Which is why I think it's perfectly fine to sack it to Bartolome here. To wipe out their board a little bit. And there's a Tithing Blade. It's kind of awkward, because all our creatures are pretty valuable. I guess I sack the Phantom. Obviously not as awkward for us as just like a targeted removal spell would be, but certainly don't love it. They flip the Tithing Blade, they can block one creature, so they block the Spike Tail, take five. They aren't dead on board, so we do cast Join the Dead and then kill them from there. Alright. Well, now I could kill them with Echo of Dusk instead. Well, actually, no. I was going to say I could cast the Echo, and then I attack with everybody. They block Spike Tail, and then I sack Spike Tail and Echo to Bartolome and hit for seven. Um, but then if they block Bartolome, they're not dead. They go to one, uh, right? If they block here, they take six damage. Yeah, they'd go to one. So, yeah, I still had to removal spell to lethal them guaranteed that turn. Either way, excellent luck there for the pivotal match of the event. That gives us the third victory, which is a huge difference in the amount of gems we get as a prize. Shooting all the way up from 250 gems to 1,000 gems, and every win from now on is... Pretty equivalent, another 400 or 200 gems as the prize from here on out. So solid recovery here from a couple quick losses early, and we are now three and two heading into game number six with at least an average 50-50 record. Here we are on the play. We don't start off till turn three, so the hand's a little slow, but I like Screaming Phantom Soul Coil Viper. That's a pretty cute combo. And we, of course, also have the really big smithy. Been a bit of an underperformer in our deck. It's been really hard to find a position that we can just tap our whole board and flip this. So it's kind of just the front half, which is just okay. And not really like a good enough card to be like a huge reason to start drafting white like we treated it. But this is day one of the format, so we are learning. And Thousand Moon Smithy is definitely dropping in my card ratings a little bit. 
Not a ton, but certainly a little bit. I can drop a 4-3 out or a 2-2. Two, two. If I drop the 2-2, two, two, the next turn I play at least one more permanent, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. I think it's better to just play the 4-3 right now. Souls of the Lost. Discard a land, drop that. That's a 1-2 for now. Could Soul Coil Viper and Petrify that thing. I don't hate it. Pretty mana efficient for the turn as well. Yeah, all this is is a big attacker or blocker, so shutting off its ability to attack or block stops everything about it. Yeah. And do that pre-combat just in case they have some really weird wild combat trick. Oh, they just have the saw blades, it's fine. Cool. Probably drop the Viper and use it to bring back the Mycoid next turn. Because then the Mycoid is back on board and we get a fungus out of it. Primordial Nar, 5-2, when it dies, they discover, so solid value. So, Smithy Mycoid, or Smithy Sawblades. Kind of like Smithy plus Sawblades a little more. Then Mycoid next turn. I mean, if I Mycoid here... If I had one more mana and I could do all this and have the Sawblades and the Mycoid, that'd be awesome. But I need five untapped artifacts for creatures. I'm going to have one, two, three, four. If I do the mycoid thing, I'll also have four because I'll have a mycoid and a fungus. Yeah. There's my own saw blades on the gnar, and we'll see what they discover. Skullcap snail when I have no cards in hand. They could choose to draw that instead of casting it, but it is probably better to just get a 1-1 on board. Oh, well, we're very happy to have no cards in hand when they do that. Another gnar. So they're going to try to just accrue value by 2 for one over and over again, even if it is kind of at random here. Uh-oh, the lack of three black mana here is awkward with this Join the Dead. Uh, I've got no artifacts engraved to flip the saw blades with either. So I can either Join the Dead or reanimate a Mycoid. If I reanimate a Mycoid, then I do have... One, let's see, one, two, three, four, five permanents on the board. If they don't interact with me at all. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna go for it. Is there a death touch trick in this format? Probably. I'm just gonna not block. Take one more damage here to make sure if there's a death touch trick I keep my board. And they're gonna play the sand wing. Cool, Mephitic Draft is the draw. So I take four damage if I flip this turn, that's worth it. We join the dead on the Gnar and take four. Go to 10, but the next turn I cast an artifact with the draft on board which is massive. I guess I could take six also, because I'm not going to have good flying blockers, but I'll have so much good stuff to block on ground. So I guess I should probably kill the flyer instead and just block everything on the ground on future turns, take a little more damage for now, because I'm going to just keep spitting out gnomes on the ground. No, another flyer. And another flyer. Oh god, we might just die to flyers here. Let's see. I mean, the, our ground is going to be so insanely good. Our board on the ground here. I'm really happy with the decision to kill the flyer at this point. 
but it might not have been enough. I'm still dead in two swings because they played two more flyers this turn. We've got a couple of our own we could draw into. We've still got another uh, Ruin Lurker Bat, Deep Cavern Bat. These wouldn't stop the 3-2, but they'd stop the 1-1 one, one trade there. Screaming Phantom would stop the 3-2. Rampaging Spike Tail. Well, well, well. Think I draw a card off the draft here? Digging for flyers rather than jamming out a 5-6, because I'm going to jam out a 6-6 six, six by playing the draft. A 7-7, seven, seven actually. No. Well, at least it's the mana to play the spike tail in the same turn. How many blockers do I need on the ground to take zero? One, two, three. I need three blockers on the ground. I'll have two that are summoning sick, so I just hold the mycoid back. Okay. So we do this, and then I still have three blockers on the ground to take zero there. But we have one turn to draw into a way to deal with these flyers from here. They did scry off the Ruin Lurker Bat next turn, so I believe they kept their top card. Cartographer's Companion. Alright, that doesn't do much here. Could get them to descend again. Oof. Non-land on top. So it does buff the Ruin Lurker Bat, which is a massive deal. That puts us to two life, so even if I kill one of the flyers, I'm dead now. Okay. Yeah, off that hit. Oh no, and we do kill one of the flyers. So Companion did matter here because the card underneath it was a non-land. If the next card was a land, we'd survive another turn here by killing the 3-2. Dang. All right, well... Flyers are still good in draft, it looks like. Look how crazy our board would have gotten if we could just survive slightly longer. So close. So close. And they do get to guaranteed discover a mischievous pup here, which is cute. But we're already dead on board. Oh, they can pick up the Souls of the Lost, save it from the Petrify. Which is cute, but we still, like, egregiously are winning on the ground. Alright, there's no good artifact to craft with this. We don't do that. Yeah, I was gonna say, um... Even with, like, saving Souls of the Lost from Petrify, we're still killing them next turn. Or the turn after that pretty easily. Like, we're definitely winning the long game on the ground. It's just these flyers are the issue, so... I don't think there's much I could have done there. Maybe there was some line I didn't find, but overall, definitely join the dead on the flyer was by far the correct choice. You'd go for the early Petrify on the souls, because it could get so, so much larger later. Maybe had we not popped this early Petrify, we could have held it long enough to put it on the bat. I don't know if I had enough life total enough blocks to have done that, because I did end up taking quite a bit of damage before we even flipped our um, our gnome producing thing. Like, we were taking plenty of damage on the ground, too, so if I hadn't petrified the souls, I do think it would have hit us for a few points of damage throughout that game as well. Maybe so. Maybe so. It was really cool to actually get to flip the Thousand Moon Smithy and do some wild stuff with it, really making it look like it earned its spot this time, but we lost the game in the end anyway, because Flyers are still great. So three and three. It's going to be for this draft of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Pretty cool deck. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this archetype so far. 
Um, I just feel like the blue, red, blue, red, and white combinations have really, really great synergies going for them. Um, Spike Tail Skull, uh, Spike Tail and Soul Coil Viper combo never popped off here. So I think the deck would have been better without them. Um, the Spike Tail still played okay. The Soul Coil Viper didn't really do anything. So had we dropped those and gotten maybe a little more aggressive, a little lower curve, that could have helped here. Maybe get a little more lifelink in here. Try to find some other cheap flyers or something could help the deck out. But overall, still played fine at 3-3 three and three here. Just think we uh, just didn't quite get there. Just a very average, very lukewarm run from our black-white deck today. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.